grace and peace to each and every one of you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad in it. I am so honored and privileged to have this opportunity to share with you this evening in our Wednesday night review, and I want to welcome you to Greater Destiny Church, where we are transforming lives through purposeful ministry. We are led by love, living in power, and uplifted in praise. Our mission is to infuse a love and a passion for Christ in all people and to propel them to pursue their greater destiny in Jesus Christ. So I need you to tell everyone that you know, share this broadcast, let them know that it is time for Wednesday Night Refuel right here at Greater Destiny Church in Tacoma, Washington, and there is a word from the Lord just for you. During this time of pandemic, as we have been sequestered, my prayer is that each and every one of you have been in a place to where you have been seeking the Most High God in ways that you have never sought him before. He said, if you seek me, you will find me if you search for me with all of your heart. And Jesus makes it very clear in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that his expectation of us is to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. He makes this very profound statement after letting us know that we have absolutely nothing to worry about. Don't worry about where you're going to sleep. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Because just as I give unto the fowls of the air to eat, just as they don't worry, just as they're not crying, just as they're not walking back and forth full of anxiety, trying to figure it out. He said, I have already worked it out. Just like I've worked it out for them, I have worked it out for you. So people of the Most High God, I pray that you are embracing the peace of God, embracing the provision of God, and embracing the protection of the Most High God. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come before you, our sovereign God, our King of kings, and Lord of lords. You are our Father, who art in heaven, and hallowed be thy name. Father, we come before you tonight because we are hungry and we are thirsty. Your word declares, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Father, if you give us to drink, we will drink. If you give us to eat, we will eat. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We thank you and we praise you that you will feed us tonight, that we will be fed manna from on high, bread of heaven. We will be full and we will be satisfied because your word is sure and your word is filling. Now, Father, we thank you tonight because you are going to speak to us this evening. And so we ask that you would open up our ears, that we would hear, and that we would have mastery perception to discern what you are speaking during this time. Open up our hearts that we would receive the word of God. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We thank you and we praise you for all things. We thank you and we glorify you for your light. For the word of God brings forth light. And we thank you that it giveth understanding to the simple. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you once again. Welcome to Greater Destiny Church. Wednesday night refuel. This is the night that we delve into and that we search out the scriptures that we may garner greater understanding, greater clarity, greater wisdom, and greater knowledge through the word of God. So share this broadcast with someone and let them know that it is time to be refueled and to be recharged and to be recalibrated. Now we have been in a series uh, this month concerning choices and voices, choices and voices. Somebody just help me teach and preach today, choices and voices. And this series is designed to empower us to make decisions, to make choices that will propel us to pursue our greater destiny in Jesus Christ. And today specifically, we're going to talk about 
voices. It is my desire that as we spend this time together and throughout the next couple of weeks, that we will learn how to accurately discern and distinguish the voice of the Most High God. Now, just a little review from last week. It has been scientifically proven that the average adult thinks 35,000 thoughts a day. And so this means that as you think these things, you have to make choices on these particular matters. And so you have 35,000 choices a day, and as your level of responsibility increases, so does the multitude of choices that you have to make. So the voices that you listen to determine the quality of your choices. Somebody just type that. The voices that I listen to determine the quality of my choices. Joel chapter 3 verse 14 declares, Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Multitudes, many of us are in this place called the valley of decision. What should I be doing now to benefit my labor? How should I approach ministry in this season? Should I expand my business? Is this relationship right for me? Even in the midst of this pandemic, there are some choices that you are going to have to make because your decisions determine the trajectory of your life. But in order to make the right choice, you must listen to the right voice. In order to make the right choice, you must listen to the right voice. And so tonight, God is going to give us mastery perception. The Lord is going to endow us. He is going to impart. He is going to impute mastery perception through his word. Matthew chapter 11 to verse 15, Jesus says this very simply. He who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. And that is the amplified version. The King James Version declares, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit is speaking. Revelation, John the Revelator declares, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church. Now this is a statement that Jesus makes, and he makes it numerous times, and he uh, typically states this after teaching or uh, giving a parable that would require more than ordinary ability just to simply hear, and also it would require more than just the wisdom of man. It will require spiritual discernment. And so it's not speaking to the natural ear, but it's speaking to the spiritual ear. When he says, he that hath the ear, let him hear what the spirit is speaking. He's talking about the natural ear. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 3 through 14, it declares, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because why? They are spiritually discerned. And so it is God's desire that we have this ability to spiritually discern the things of the Spirit. And one of the most powerful prayers that we can ever pray is not, Lord, give me a greater anointing. Not, Lord, I need a new house. Not, Lord, give me a new car. But one of the greatest prayers that we can pray unto God is for an ear to hear. And understand that preachers and prophets are not the only ones who need ears to hear. Many times when it comes to hearing the voice of God, we leave that to the responsibility of the pastor or uh, a prophet to speak unto us on behalf of God. But the Lord desires to speak to you too. I don't have a license. I don't have a title. But you're saved. I don't have a license. I don't have a title. But you have relationship. Listen, it is not required that you be a prophet to hear. The only thing that is required to be able to have an ear to hear that in which the Lord is speaking is to have have a relationship, to have a relationship. And the secret to this relationship with God and understanding the relationship with God and even being on the same frequency with him is being in a place to where you are building trust, confidence, complete reliance, and being available to hear. 
Uh huh. So relationships are built on these things. This is how we are able to be in alignment with him. This is how we get on the same frequency as him is when we build a relationship with him that is based on trust and confidence and availability. We have to not just trust him, but we also need to be confident in him. We don't need to just be confident in him, but we also need to be available to him, available to hear. Now think about it this way. When you have a relationship with someone, you have the ability to hear them differently than other people hear them, okay? Think about a relationship between a parent and a child. That mother has the ability to hear her baby crying, right? But she has the ability to hear what the baby is crying for beyond just the cry of the baby. That mother has the ability to hear that baby crying and to be able to tell when that baby is in pain, when that baby is hungry, when that baby is just, just exploring their voice, that mother has that ability to do that based on what? Their relationship. That parent has the ability to listen to their child crying outside. And you can tell if that child is fake crying, if that child is really in some serious pain, or if that child is in danger. You are able to hear based on the relationship you have with them. Also from a child to a parent. A child knows, all right? When that parent's voice shifts a little bit, okay, I probably push the envelope just a little further. Why? Because that child has relationship with their parent. It's the same thing with our friends. You can ask your friend, hey, how you doing? And your friend can say, you know, I'm okay. And because you know your friend, because you have relationship with them, you know that they're okay is not really okay. And so then you can say, all right, what's really going on? I know you say you're okay, but I know you. I have a relationship with you. I know your voice. I know your demeanor. I know you because I have a relationship with you. So likewise, as we have been trained to know the voice of those that we have relationship with, we have to train our ears to hear and to know the voice of the Lord. So how do we do this? How do we train our ears to hear and to know when it's God's voice, to know the voice of the Lord? We do this through prayer. Now understand that prayer is not just us going and talking to God, but prayer is also as we go to God, taking the opportunity to sit and to wait for God to talk to us. How many of us go into our time of prayer and after we tell the Lord everything we want, and I'm not in doubting that, in doubting that rather because we are to go to him and we are to give him our petitions. We are to share the depths of our heart. We are to pour out our emotions before him. Amen. But we are also to take time to stop and to sit and to allow him to speak to us. And understand this, even during our time of prayer, we will find that after we speak to him and we may be sitting in a place waiting for him to speak back to us, sometimes you'll hear nothing but silence. But how can you know that even the silence of God is yet the voice of God? I just said something. Even the silence of God is even the voice of God because through his silence, he could be telling you to wait through his silence, he could be telling you to hold on to the last thing I said because understand that he is also Abba, who is father, and just like a parent, he's not going to keep repeating himself over and over and over again. And so sometimes we have to learn that his silence is also him speaking. We have to learn to hear the voice of God even through his silence. And also, we have to continue to ensure that we are humble. Because some of us think that God is obligated to speak to us every time we go before him. No, we are obligated to speak to him. But he is not obligated to speak to us. Ask the children of Israel. There were hundreds of years where the Lord did not speak at all until he got good and ready to speak. And so when we go before the Lord, we've got to go humbly before him. He said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves. We have to first go before him humbly. And if he decides to speak to us, he will speak. 
If his silence is his voice, then we've got to say, okay, Lord, I receive the silence of your voice today. But we should never be in a position to where we think, oh, God's going to speak to me. You cannot twist arm God to talk to you. You can't force him to speak to you. You can't manipulate God into speaking to you. Hallelujah. You have to be trained to hear what God is saying. We have to train our ears to hear and to know the voice of God. First, yes, through prayer and also through meditation. Now, I'm not talking about meditation. Hum, you know, all the hum. What are you doing? I'm meditating. Hum. I'm not, I, I'm talking about intentional meditation. All right. And so what are we meditating on? We are meditating on his word day and night. David said in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is also in the law of the Lord, and he meditates day and night. And so when we meditate on the word of God, it gives us the opportunity to learn his voice. Because through his word is revealed what he has said, and understand that even when we read the word of God, it's not just what he said. It's also what he is saying because he still speaks through eternity, through his eternal word. For heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will stand and speak forever. One of our problems is that we're not satisfied with the written word. The written word is not enough for us. You know, we want to hear a word so we can say, oh, child, God spoke to me. Oh, I got a word. No, no. The written word is just as powerful. It's just as relevant as the rainbow word of God. And so we train our ears to hear and to know the voice of God through prayer and meditating on his word. John 1 and 1 declares, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And what the word was God. John chapter 5 verse 39 declares, search the scriptures. John 5 and 39. Listen saints, this is for you. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which what? Testify of me. And so if you want to know the voice of God. You have to read the written word of God that testifies of him. Anything you need to know about God, how he speaks, how he maneuvers, is in the word of God. Well, you say, it's a new day. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yes, there are new methods, but the message is still the same. This is vital because you need to know how to distinguish voices. Because not only does the Lord want your ear, but the devil wants your ear too. There are three voices that you have the propensity to give ear to. There are three voices that we have the propensity to give ear to. Number one is your voice. Number two is the voice of the Lord. And number three is the voice of the devil. Now, you say, well, what about the other voices? Here is what you need to understand about other voices. Other voices do not become amplified in our lives until we repeat what the other voices have said. Because even after someone else says something to you, you are still the final voice. And so, you have to give voice to what other people say in order to activate choices. So it's not about other voices, oh, there's just so many voices, so many voices. It's about you learning how to ignore those voices, one, and also about you learning how not to repeat what other people have spoken to you. Because see, it's, it's when you repeat, because words are like seeds. And see, when you receive them, you allow them to be embedded in you, and then they grow thereby. But it's not until you repeat what someone has spoken to you, that that word resonates in you. And so, it still remains your voice. 
Those are the three voices that we have propensity to incline our ear to. Your voice. Yes, intertwined with other voices, but ultimately it's your voice. It's what you say to you about you. It's what you say to you about what they said and the choices you make from there. The voice of the Lord and the voice of the devil. This is why the Lord told the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3. He said, incline. And what does it mean to incline? It means to bend over. It means to lean in. See, it means to bring yourself to a place to where you can hear his voice and his voice alone. And he told the prophet Isaiah, he said, incline, lean in, bend over uh, your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. So we must be careful of who and what we incline our ears to. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. And somebody just say, we must be careful of who we incline our ears to. I want you to get that in your spirit. We must be careful of who we lean into. We must be careful of who we bend our heads to hear. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 2 declares, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Now what does that word expressly mean? It means clearly. Okay? When the Lord speaks, there is no ambiguity. When the Lord speaks, there is no uncertainty. When the Lord speaks, there is no confusion because he is not the author of confusion. When he speaks, he speaks a sure word. He speaks a clear word. He speaks a concise word. And so now the Spirit speaketh expressly. So he speaks clearly and speaketh means that he continuously speaks clearly. You can, listen, you can rely that he will never change in how he speaks. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. This is why we have to be careful who we incline our ears to. Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. When the Lord speaks to you, he will never tell you to do or go anywhere that is diametrically opposed to his word, his perfect will, plan, and purpose for your life. He wants us to have complete dependence on him in every area and aspect of our lives as he did his heavenly father. So here Jesus said, listen, I am modeled unto you what Interdependence looks like I didn't make any decisions without first what? Consulting my father. I didn't make any decisions without considering the law of God. I didn't make any decisions unless I was first led by the spirit of God. John chapter 5 verse 30. And I want to read this in the Amplified Bible. Now, there are two versions of the Amplified Bible out there right now. There is the Amplified version, which is a more uh, contemporary version. And there's an Amplified Classic Bible. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Bible because I like how this really just breaks this down and delves into this particular passage of Scripture. So John chapter 5, verse 38, it reads, I am able to do nothing from myself. This is Jesus talking. Interdependently of my own accord. But only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge, I decide as I am bid to decide, as the voice comes to me, so I give a decision. And my judgment is right, just righteous, because I do not seek or consult. This is interdependence. He said, I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. Woo, my God. And so here is how you further learn to distinguish between the voice of God and the voice of the enemy, all right? We want you to take notes here and really listen here. So first understand this, that the devil never speaks truth. The devil never speaks truth. 
This is why his name, Satan, it means accuser. He seeks to lie. He seeks to accuse. He seeks to assassinate the character of the born-again believers. And this is why, people of God, you have to be very careful of who you put your mouth on and the kind of conversations that you participate in. Because when you participate in conversations that are of the nature of gossip, that are of the nature of assassinating someone's character, people of the Most High God, you are participating in demonic activity. Oh my God. Somebody ought to type, I don't want to participate in demonic activity. I don't want to participate in satanic activity. John chapter 8, verse 44 says, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. Talking about the devil. This is Jesus talking. He said he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. Thanks to God, this is the NIV. This thing took me out. What is your native language? Woo! The devil's native language is a lie. But God's native language is truth. This is why the scripture says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Because when we listen to the lies of the enemy, when we adhere to the lies of the enemy, what do they do? They bind us up. All right, let me finish this. When he lies, <laughs> he speaks his native language. That means that's the only thing he can do. The only thing he can do is lie. For he is a liar and the father of lies. So when the enemy speaks to you, these are, this is what he desires to do. This is what he's doing, all right? When the enemy speaks to you, he's speaking lies. He speaks lies to do these three things. Number one, to distort you. What does it mean to be distorted? It means to have received um, information that is deceptive, truth that is twisted. To be distorted, it means to be misled. It means to be given a false impression. This is why you have to watch what you allow the enemy to speak to you concerning other people. Oh my goodness, I haven't talked to him in two weeks. He must not like me anymore. I was at the restaurant and the, the waitress, she walked past me and didn't speak. She must not like me. Amen. The enemy will speak to us and say things like, you know, they, they meant to hurt you. They, they meant that. They meant that. The enemy will bring little petty things to your mind to cause you to be distorted and to give you a false impression of people. A false impression of your family. Well, in my family, they celebrate everybody else. And then the enemy says, yeah, that's right, they do. They didn't celebrate you when you did this. They didn't celebrate you when you did that. And so now you have this false impression that your family doesn't love you. Because you entertained the voice of the enemy. Not only will he distort you with regard to how you feel about other people, but he will also distort you about you. He will tell you, you cannot accomplish this goal. Don't start a business. Everybody's already doing what you're doing. He will tell you, you will always be in the same position. Don't even think about going to get a new car because you don't qualify. He will tell you, stop going to church. What are you going to church for? He will tell you, that's why y'all up there at home sequestered right now. That's why, you know, because, uh, 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 yeah, see, see, where's your praise now? He will say all kinds of things to you to give you a false impression, to, to mislead you, and to twist the truth. So number one, when the enemy speaks to you, he speaks to you to distort you. Number two, he speaks to you to disorient you. He wants you to become disoriented. What does it mean to be disoriented? It means to lose a sense of direction. He wants you to get into a place to where the Lord tells you to go left. And as you're going left, he starts to speak to you. Are you sure you're supposed to go this way? Are you sure you need to be entering into this class? Are you sure you need to be pursuing this degree? 
Are you sure you need to go and to uh, give benevolence to this family? They're not going to appreciate it. What are you going for? They're not even going to give you the credit. They're going to act like you didn't even do anything. He will try to cause you to be disoriented and to lose your sense of direction. And you'll find yourself going in one and you're like, wait, why, why am I doing this? Maybe I should go ahead and go right. Wait a minute, why did I? He will have you in a place where you are confused. Why am I doing this in the first place? You will forget that it was all about the glory and honor of God in the first place. Because he will begin to speak to you. And he will begin to, to, to boost up that, that uh, ego. Make you egotistical. He will begin to, to, to stir up that pride. You know, that, that vanity. You're going you're gonna to go over there and apologize? You're going to put yourself out there? You'll begin to become all confused. Or it's like, you know, yeah, why am I doing this? Oh, wait, because God told me. Because the Lord told me this is what I'm supposed to do. So when he speaks to you, he speaks to you to distort. He speaks to you to disorient. And lastly, he speaks to you to disengage you. He speaks to you to disengage you. What does it mean to be disengaged? It means to become disconnected. It means to detach from the things of God. Uh, that's what he wants more than anything. He wants you to become disengaged. He wants you to become disengaged with your church. He wants you to not tune in to Wednesday night refuel. He wants you to not tune in on Sunday mornings. He wants you to not tithe and give your offerings. He wants you to not call in on Mondays and Fridays to receive prayer and to receive encouragement. He wants you to completely disengage. He wants you to find yourself so disengaged over things that don't even matter. He wants you to become disengaged from even your own personal relationship with God. He wants you to get to a place where you feel like prayer is an option and it's not primary. He wants you to get to a place where, you know, you're just like, well, I'll, I'll read the word when I feel like it. You know, he wants to bring you to a place to where you are completely disengaged. And when you become disengaged, you become disconnected. Well, I just don't feel the presence of God. You know, I just, I, I can't. Because why? 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 Because you become disengaged. And when you become disengaged, you cannot hear. When you are distorted, you can't hear him properly. You can't hear God properly. When you become disoriented, it doesn't matter what the Lord is speaking to you. You won't be able to perceive or understand in the first place. When you become disengaged, your ears become deafened. Why? Because you're no longer inclining your ear. You're no longer leaning into God. You're no longer uh, bending your ear to hear. You are now in a place to where you have taken a back seat. There is now that disengagement. The Lord does not want you to be distorted. He doesn't want you to be disoriented. He doesn't want you to disengage. But this is what the enemy comes to do. John 10, 10 says, the thief cometh but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said that I have come that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. That's right, Sister Dion. Devil, you are exposed tonight. That's right, devil, you are exposed tonight. He said, I come that you might have light, that you might have it more abundantly. So when God speaks to you, when God speaks to you, when you hear the voice of his spirit, because he speaks to us through his spirit, understand that there is a protocol to this. God speaks to his son. His son speaks to the spirit. Glory to God. And so when we hear the voice of God, we're hearing through the voice of God by the channel of his spirit that dwells in us, that we have relationship with. The Holy Ghost, that is our teacher, that is our comforter, that is our guide, that walks with us, that talks with us. Hallelujah. So when God speaks, he gives us life. Here's what happens when he gives us this life. There are three areas that we can look forward to receiving when we hear the voice of God. Here are the reasons by which. Number one, he speaks to activate. The Lord speaks to activate. What does it mean for something to be activated? It means for something to come alive, to be stirred. John 6 and 63 says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. Uh-huh, that's quickeneth. That means to be activated. It means to be awakened. It means to be shaken. It means to be stirred. The flesh profiteth nothing. 
But he says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's right, Evangelist Henderson. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So when God speaks, he speaks to give us life. This is why we are only to repeat what God says, because the words of Satan are words of death. But the words of the Lord that we hear through his Holy Spirit are words of life. And so when we speak the word of God, we're speaking life, speaking life to dead situations, speaking breath, speaking recalibration. Oh my gosh, to matters that seem as if they are so insurmountable that they cannot be resurrected. Ah, uh, no, when we speak the word of God, we speak life. So when God speaks, he speaks life. He speaks to activate, all right? He speaks to activate, and he also speaks to direct. Understand that the Lord does not just speak arbitrarily. He's not just speaking words. Oh, the Lord is just talking, just talking. When the Lord speaks, we should tremble. When the Lord speaks, we are to be still because it is an honor and it is a privilege to hear the voice of his spirit. And so he speaks to direct. What does this mean? He gives guidance and he gives instruction. He gives guidance and he gives instruction. And let's ask ourselves an honest question. How many times have we prayed for direction? And how many times has the Lord given us that direction and he told us to go east, and we went south. <laughs> Glory to God. When he speaks, he gives us clear directions. And even when we don't understand what is on the other side of the directive, it is still our mandate and our responsibility to follow his guidance, and to follow his instruction, and to follow his direction. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, it declares, whether you turn to the right or turn to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. See, that's how clear the voice of the Lord is. That's how clear his spirit speaks to us. When you're going in the wrong direction, he is like our global positioning system, our GPS Recalculating route, you're going the wrong way. Well, I, I'm just going to go over here for a little while and then I'll come back. No, recalculating route, you're going the wrong way. Recalculating route, you're going the wrong way. And guess what? After a time, like I said, the Lord's not going to keep on repeating himself over and over again, but he will give you an instruction. And guess what? It will be amplified with an echo. And you'll be able to hear nothing but his reverberating echo of what he has already spoken. Just like that GPS gets annoying. And you start that ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like, wait, you're going the wrong direction. This is why we trust in him with all of our heart. And we lean not to our own understanding. For in all our ways when we acknowledge him, he wants to direct our path. And so, when God speaks, he speaks to give us life. How does he do this? He activates. He directs. And he also gives us revelation. And so we have activation, direction, and revelation. Biblical revelation, situational revelation, and supernatural revelation. Listen, there are some things that you will never be able to perceive through the spirit of man. They can only be perceived through the spirit of God. Big Mama's wisdom is not always going to help you. You need the wisdom of the Spirit of God. You need the Spirit of the Lord to rest upon you. The Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of might, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of understanding, and the fear of the Lord. And so, he gives unto us revelation when we go before him, when we seek him. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19. I hope you're getting something. Evangelist Henderson, said, like the commercial, can you hear me now? <laughs> like the commercial, can you hear me now? Amen. Listen, let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. And we're going to read verses 3 through 9. But first, let me set this up. I need to first go to Exodus chapter 18. Now here Moses 
is leading the children of Israel. And as he's leading the children of Israel, um, his tasks and his responsibilities become overwhelming. And so he has a father-in-law by the name of Jethro. And Jethro is following Moses and he is rejoicing with Moses. Moses is testifying of how the Lord has delivered them out of Egypt and all these great and mighty things. And Jethro said, oh, Moses, I'm rejoicing with you. I'm rejoicing with you. But the time came where Jethro was functioning in the wisdom of God. Because understand that you will hear the voice of the Lord unto yourself through the Spirit, yes. But God also uses people to speak to us. And can I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, we've got to get over this respecter of persons where we will only hear certain people. This is the time and this is the season where God is going to use unusual people in your life to speak to you. He that hath an ear, let him hear. And so the Lord uses Jethro to say to Moses, he said in verse 14, this is 18 and 14, he said, and when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, why is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou self alone and all the people stand by thee from morning unto evening? He said, listen, Moses, why are you doing all of this work all by yourself? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, because the people come unto me to inquire of God. In other words, because people keep asking me, and I don't know how to say no. Oh, gosh, this is preaching. This is preaching better than some of y'all are saying amen right now. His father-in-law, Jethro, is watching him exert so much energy. He's watching him become exhausted and exasperated. And Moses' response is, I have to do it because I don't know how to say no. Verse 16, and when they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one another. And I do make them to know the statutes of God and his law. Verse 17. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. He said, Moses, this is not good for you. And he's speaking through the wisdom of God. He said, listen, get you some men that you can trust. Get you some people that you can share these responsibilities with to counsel and to give judgment and to teach the laws of God. And so Moses, he adhered to the voice of the Lord through his father-in-law. Now Moses could have became haughty and arrogant. Well, who is he to tell me? Who is he to speak to me? I'm Moses. I led the children. God, he has, he has uh, rock forth signs and wonders and miracles through me. Who is he to speak to me? And some of us have had that same disposition. Oh my God, oh my God. Who do they think they are? Who do they think they are to talk to me? God talks to me too. Yes, the Lord speaks to you too. But he knows when you're in a place to hear and when you're in a place not to hear. Yes, God speaks to you too. But the last time you sat down and prayed, you gave God a grocery list and didn't sit and listen long enough for him to talk back to you. So he had to use somebody else. He had to use somebody to speak to you. But we thank God for the voices that he uses. I'm not just looking for a prophet. I'm not just looking for a pastor. I'm not just looking for an evangelist or a teacher. I'm looking for someone who is open, someone who is available that will speak the word of God. And so here in Exodus chapter 19, the word of the Lord declares, verse 3, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Verse 5, now therefore, if you will obey my voice, in order to obey his voice, you have to know his voice. In order to know his voice, you have to listen to his voice. In order to learn how to listen to his voice, you have to train your ear to hear. This takes discipline. This takes sitting still. This takes prayer and intercession. This takes studying his word, searching out the scriptures. He said, and keep my covenant. Then shall ye be a peculiar treasure 
unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders and of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, now say to God, I told you that I'm following the cloud and not the crowd. Why am I following the cloud? Because the cloud is a manifestation of the presence of God. The cloud not only is a manifestation of the presence of God, that in which I can see with my spiritual eye, but the cloud also carries a voice. Uh, verse 9 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe there forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Saints of God, the Lord wants to speak to you. The Lord speaks expressly to you, even right now. But it is your choice to heed the voice of the Lord. So first you have to make a choice to heed what he's speaking. Because the quality of your choices are determined by the voice or the voices that you listen to. And so we as the people of God, we don't want to listen to multiple voices, but we want the voice of God to be the authoritative voice in our lives. We want to know him. We want to have mastery perception. We want to have keen discernment that when he speaks, it's no shadow of a doubt that we know that it is him. Sister Cynthia says, I choose to heed the voice of the Lord. Yes, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. And the quality of your choices are determined by the voice that you listen to. And we choose to listen to the voice of the Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Understand that as he is one Lord, he speaks with one voice. When you're in a place and you start to hear multiple voices, oh my God, I hear multiple voices and so many voices, that is not God. And you have to immediately cast down those imaginations and all those hiding that exalts itself against the knowledge of God because he speaks with one voice, the voice of the Lord from on high. Listen, it is mightier than the noise of the waters and the seas. And so you have to learn to distinguish and to, okay, no, no, that's not the voice of God. Uh -uh. His voice is mightier than that. His voice doesn't confuse me. His voice doesn't cause chaos. His voice is distinctive. His voice, oh my gosh, it breaks the seer of Lebanon. His voice brings forth breakthrough. There is no ambiguity. There is no uncertainty. There is not a lack of clarity. Saints of God, we are going to be propelled and equipped and empowered the more to know and to hear the voice of the Lord during these unprecedented times. Saints of God, we need a word from the Lord more than we've ever needed a word before. And the Lord said, yes, I am speaking. I'm showing signs. I'm showing wonders. Ah, I am manifesting miracles. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking through the people that are around you that you rate as insignificant. I'm speaking to you through my Holy Spirit. But I just need you to sit down long enough to hear me. And then I also need you to be mature enough to know what is to be repeated and what is not to be repeated. I need you to have the anointing as of the sons of Issachar to know when to discern the times and not just to know how to discern the times, but to know the season and to know what to do during that season, to know what to speak in that season and to know what not to speak in that season. 
Father, we thank you and we praise you that our ears are open. We incline our ears unto you. We want to hear you. We want to know you like we've never heard and known you before. So speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit. Here we are. We are here to listen. Father, during our time of prayer, first we ask that you would forgive us for all the times we prayed and talked the whole time and never gave you an opportunity to speak to us. Forgive us, Lord, and we are going to do better for your spirit desires to speak expressly to us. We ask, Lord, that you also would forgive us for being a respecter of persons, for putting titles and positions on individuals and deeming those people worthy to speak to us and not individuals who have a relationship. Because there are many that cry, Lord, Lord, but their hearts are far from you. There are many that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Forgive us, Lord, for rating your precious people insignificant. Father, we humble ourselves tonight to hear you, whether you speak to us directly through your spirit, whether you speak through our fellow brother or sister, whether you speak through silence, uh -huh. whether silence is your voice in a situation, whether silence is your answer to us, we humble ourselves. And we submit to your will. We submit to your plan. We submit to your purpose. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, that we will not be like the foolish people that have an ear to hear but cannot hear. Whew. But Father, we thank you for we receive mastery perception. Lift your hands. Lift your hands, people of God. Lift your hands. We receive mastery perception. We receive keen discernment. We thank you that we are healed of spiritual deafness. That anything that has been blocking our hearing, that it is unblocked in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. We can hear. Yeah, we can hear. We thank you for ears to hear. We thank you for ears to hear. Now, as we hear, direct our speech. As we hear, direct our speech. For the words that you speak, they are spirit and they are life. We thank you, Lord, for life tonight. <laughs> we thank you for activation. We thank you for direction. We thank you for revelation by your spirit and through your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Say to God, I feel the Holy Ghost even right now. Those of you who lifted your hands at home, I know that you felt that impartation. Oh my goodness, you are getting ready to walk into the realm of mastery perception. You will no longer be deceived by voices, but you will know the voice of God with confidence and with assurance. You will no longer be confused. You will no longer sit in a place of chaos. You will no longer sit in a place of ambiguity. Ah, but his voice is now clear. Oh my gosh, even his silence is clear. Listen, we will no longer take his silence personally, but we will know that in his silence, that means that we're supposed to wait. In his silence, that means we're supposed to keep seeking him. In his silence, his voice is saying, I'm preparing something for you. Hallelujah. God bless you, saints of God. I, I, I don't want to quit. I don't want to quit, but I have to quit because we are uh, over our time. But I pray that you have received the word of the Lord tonight. We're going to continue on in this session, in this series, rather, voices and choices for the rest of this month. Because we know that the enemy comes to torment us. The enemy comes to taunt us. Oh, my gosh. But we are so thankful unto the Lord who wants us to live a life of peace. And he said, I'll keep your mind in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. We're meditating on him. Oh, my gosh, we are focused on him. We are transfixed to him. Hallelujah. We look to the hills when cometh our help. For our help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Greater destiny, I'm following the cloud, not the crowd. I'm following 
his move. I'm following his voice. So follow me as I follow Christ. We want you to give tonight. We want you to give your tithe tonight. For those of you that can and will, we want you to give a tenth of your increase according to Malachi chapter 3. There are so many promises that are uh, available to the people of the Most High God. So we want you to give. You can go to Cash App, GDC Tacoma, or you can go to our website, Greater Destiny Tacoma.com, and you can give there, or you can go to Givelify. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Missionary Davenport said, yes, I received the word of the Lord on tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Sister Nicole said, I have received the word. Pastor, thank you for this word tonight. Amen. Praise God. The people of the Most High God are receiving the word of the Lord. We want you to give. We want you to give an offering tonight. And I want as many of you that can and will to give a seed of $20 in this offering tonight. I want you to give a seed of $20. Let's sow into the ministry. The Bible says when we give, that it will be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto our bosom. Yes, brother Darius, the word of God will sustain you. Glory to God. Yes, Sister Tasha, his voice breaks for a breakthrough. Woo! Glory to God. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Want you to give tonight. Be a blessing to the ministry. God is doing great and mighty things here at Greater Destiny, and it's because of your faithfulness in your tithe and in your offering that we are able to do the things in our community and to do the things for the people of God that we are able to do by way of benevolence and by way of just loving on the people of God. So love you all so much. Let me pray a quick prayer. Father, I thank you and I glorify you for all of those that are giving by way of your tithe or giving their offering tonight. And I thank you that Paul Poverty is hereby abolished. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah! And prosperity is their abundant portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ, I pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. All right, people of the Most High God, we will see you Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for morning worship. There is a word from the Lord just for you. God bless you.